Hi everyone, this is Theo from ProcoBlocks.com. Today I'm going to show you the XP Pen Artist 16 Pen Digitizer Display. This is actually a monitor that you can draw on. Ever since my unboxing video, a lot of questions have came in asking me when that review is going to be up. So today I'm going to review this. Let's take a look at all the things that are included first. This is the power AC adapter. This is the power cable. This is a HDMI cable with full-size ports. If you are using a computer with HDMI port output, you can connect that directly to the monitor. The monitor only accepts HDMI input. This is a mini display port to HDMI adapter. So if you are using mini display port, that's great. If you are using a DVI port, then you will need to buy a DVI to HDMI adapter. These are two USB cables. I'm not sure why they included two. Perhaps one is a backup. There are two charging cables for the pen. The pen is powered by battery that is built into the pen and you charge that through the small hole at the back of the pen and there are two pens included. XP Pen is actually quite generous with the accessories. And we have this pen holder where you can put the pen either vertically like this or horizontally. And inside this pen holder are eight replacement tips and one nib remover. And in this package, we have the warranty card, the cleaning cloth, driver CD, and a pair of gloves, and of course the manual. By the way, this was sent over to me by XP Pen for review purposes. They currently have three pen displays that are available. There is the Artist 22, which features a 22 inch screen. This is the Artist 16 which features a 15.6 inch screen and they have a smaller one which features a 10 inch screen so the difference between the 22 and this is this has eight physical shortcut buttons the 22 inch doesn't have any shortcut buttons and of course the size difference but other than that most of the other specifications they are pretty much similar the build quality of this monitor is quite solid the bezel is matte surface and there is another bezel for the glass and as you can see this is really reflective there are eight shortcut buttons here on the side and you can customize these buttons with any keyboard shortcuts that you like let's take a look at the back so this monitor comes pre-installed with the stand and this is the stand And you can achieve different positions by releasing the latch here and moving the stand around. So this is the latch. I think you can uninstall the stand also if you want to VESA mount this monitor. Let's take a look at the ports on this side. There are only three ports. This is the full-size HDMI, USB port, and this is for the power cable. So this is how it looks like when it's set up. The cables come out from the left side. It's quite a lightweight monitor that I can lift with one hand. Now on this side, there are some buttons for you to get into the menu of the monitor, but the customization, the settings are very limited. You can change the brightness, contrast. Those are the more important things that you can change other than that nothing much if you want to do color calibration you have to do it through the os either on windows or on mac os i'm using mac os by the way in this review i'm not able to show you how it works on windows because i do not have a windows computer at home even though this is an ips panel it does require some calibration when i first set this up the colors were off let me show you the original colors they were something like this, there's an orange or brown color cast all over the screen. So I had to use my color calibrator, I'm using this, the Spider 5 Pro, to calibrate the screen. 
and now it looks all right. So I calibrated it three times. The first time I measured the sRGB support was up to 86%. Second time it's 89%. I adjusted the contrast and finally I calibrated it and it gives me 96% sRGB and the colors are pretty all right now. I've always calibrated my monitors with the color calibrator so I'm not able to tell you how you can do so without a color calibrator. It's going to be a bit more tedious because you have to go through the OS settings to change the brightness, contrast, temperature and all the things like that. So this saved me a lot of time. Now I'm going to show you the different angles that this monitor can achieve. This is almost perfectly upright. So I can release the catch behind, just pull it up and I can tilt the monitor down bit by bit. Now right now, it's supported by the rubber feet behind and the base of the monitor. And at this position, the monitor, it lifts up slightly. And as I move down further, the base of the monitor is completely off the table. Now at this position, if you press down hard on the monitor, it can wobble slightly because the base right here, this base here, it's a bit small compared to this base here. It's not a very big issue, just something to take note of. Usually I use the monitor at this angle and it's quite stable like this. After you have installed the driver from the CD or from the download from their website, you will have access to this tablet setting dialog box. This is where you can adjust the pressure sensitivity. You can customize the buttons on the pen. You can customize the buttons here as well. Let me show you. You can customize it to any keyboard shortcut that you want. And on this last tab here, this is where you can calibrate the screen to remove parallax error. Now the glass is quite close to the screen. There is this uh, thickness there. So it's going to contribute to some parallax. And the first thing you should do when you use this screen is to calibrate it. Basically, they will show you a cross on the screen. You just try and click on the cross with the tip of the pen. And this will remove the parallax and after that you can close this now I'm going to show you the pen performance in different applications this is Photoshop CS5 yes I'm still using the old version of Photoshop and the reason for that is because it still works Now I'm able to create very thin lines by just applying very faint pressure. I'm not sure if you can see the lines but as long as the tip is touching the screen, I can get a line. So this monitor, this screen is very sensitive which is great. Let me show you the transition between the thin and thick strokes. The transition is very smooth, very gradual, which is great. There is no lag at all. And let me show you the quick strokes. They taper quite well. So this is Photoshop. It works fine on this monitor. Let me switch over to Adobe Illustrator CS5. Let me create a new file, pick a brush. I'm going to choose this round brush. I'm going to have the diameter change with the pressure, so I need to change that. And unfortunately, I do not have the option to set the diameter to change it with the pressure because that option is not available to me. So pressure doesn't work with Illustrator CS5 at least for this Mac version so the only lines that you can get are the uniform lines it's quite responsive as well no lag whatsoever 
let me switch over to using Midibank Paint Pro this is a nice drawing application that is free and it's also a very powerful application so after you have calibrated the screen to remove the parallax you can get very accurate lines you know where that tip is that's where the line is going to come out from same thing with Midibank Paint Pro I'm able to get very thin lines when I press down softly and very thick lines when I draw hard which is great so it's very sensitive here as well the transition is good the lines they taper very beautifully let me switch over to mischief Again, it's very responsive and there is pressure too. So this is great. Let's move over to Krita. So pressure works here as well. I do not use this software a lot because I do not know how to use it. Let me switch over to Tayasui Sketches Pro. This is actually a tablet app that's ported over to Mac OS. So let me pick this pen here. So pressure works well let me use a very thin line to draw the next letter and a very thick line I'm going to put the mic next to the pen tip to let you hear what it's like when drawing So that's how it sounds like when drawing. The most important thing is there is no squeaky sound when the pen is moving across the screen. With some other tablets, some other pen displays, they actually have that kind of sound which is very irritating. Drawing on this screen feels quite smooth. I wouldn't say it's slippery. There is still a good degree of control so you can still draw very accurately of course it's more um, there's less friction compared to matte surface screens and the tactile feeling on matte surface screen is definitely better but here it's not too bad I think the most important thing to me is accuracy it must be accurate enough if it's too slippery sometimes your lines may slip away and that's a problem so other than the issue with Adobe Illustrator I do not have any problems with other software so maybe it's a driver thing maybe it's just an illustrator thing or maybe it's a Mac OS thing it's very difficult for me to troubleshoot because I do not have other systems to try this monitor on the pen is mostly made of plastic it has a rather nice weight and the design is quite comfortable to hold this whole section here is actually the rubber grip so this will not slip in the hand and after working on this monitor for half an hour or so it would start to get warm around this region here this is the warmest uh, region I would say it's lukewarm it's not terribly hot but you can feel the heat definitely and this area here is less hot and here and this area here is just cool 
over time if you were to draw on this monitor without the glove it would deposit some grease on the screen it can be a bit difficult to clean those things off so you might want to draw using the glove that is provided to conclude let me do a quick pros and cons comparison overall i'm quite satisfied with the drawing performance of this pen display it doesn't lag it's very responsive drawing functionality is very good it supports pressure sensitivity very well so those are the highlights and it works with most of the graphics applications that i have with with the exception of illustrator cs5 on my mac the colors are quite decent after calibration which brings me to the downside now out of the box the colors are a bit off so i have to use that color calibrator to calibrate it if you do not have that calibrator it's going to get a bit tedious to calibrate the screen by eye through your windows or mac os uh, system because the controls here they only adjust the brightness and contrast and that's the more significant downside of this unit i've received some questions asking me whether or not um, people should be getting the 15 inch or the 22 inch well the resolution on this screen this 15.6 inch screen is the same as the 22 inch so the resolution is 1920 by 1080p so with that same resolution on a smaller screen like this everything looks a bit sharper on the 22 inch screen pixelation is more obvious the drawing surface area is quite comfortable to work with and that's the same i can say for the 22 inch as well so it really comes down to whether you want to look at a larger screen or at a smaller screen and it also depends on your budget as well this is smaller so it's less expensive currently it's selling for less than us 500 dollars on amazon.com and the 22 inch model is another hundred dollars more other than the size difference well the 22 inch model doesn't have physical shortcut buttons i personally do not use shortcut buttons so it's not a downside for me but other than that it really comes down to the size and your budget i think that's all for today's review if you have any other questions let me know in the comment section below unfortunately i do not have a windows machine to test this um, monitor on so if i do if i'm able to test it on a windows machine i will update my text review the link will be in the video description below so you can check it out there thanks for watching see you in the next video bye